So welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. It is a beautiful morning. Great morning to be working on a road. Now last night I was out here. I didn't have much time, but I got started. I was kind of cutting this bank and working the ditch line, but I have a small issue that I need to take care of right now. I wanted my low spot to be in that corner right there where it's real wide and then I'll run a culvert pipe across the road. So I've got a slight downhill coming this direction, slight downhill going that direction, and I wanted that to be my low spot, but it appears that it's right over there, okay? So we're gonna check that first, and if I'm correct, we need to fix that. It's kind of tough because it's real flat through here, and you wanna make sure you have fall going to the pipe coming from both directions and like I said just eyeballing it it looks like that may be the low spot I don't know could be deceiving but we're gonna find out right now I've got my trusty laser set up this is a Bosch these are super handy to have around this may sit in the garage for months on end but when you need it you need it if I can find one of those on Amazon I'll put a link in the description but yeah, these are great to have. So yeah, I want my low spot to be right in this corner here where it's nice and wide. My culvert pipe will cross there. Just looking at it, it looks like my low spot is back by that oak tree over there. Maybe by like four inches, but we're going to find out. It's deceiving because it's flat through here. It looks flat. So if this, we'll call this my low spot. This is what I want to be my low spot. I'm right at 411 and a half. 411 and a half. I always repeat it so I don't forget it. So I'm going to go up, so I'm at five, four and a half here. So yeah, this is five inches lower right where I'm standing right here in this ditch than it is over there. So that's a problem five inches see what i'm saying so as the number goes up the grade rods going down this is five inches lower in here than it is over there well there's a couple ways i can correct this actually there's three different ways i can correct this the first thing i could do is cut all this down about six or seven inches and that would make my low spot in the corner lower than that over there the other thing i could do Option number two, I could fill this in. As you can see, it starts to go uphill there a little bit. So I have some room. I could put some fill in there and get that about six inches higher than this right here. Rework my ditch. That way I would have fall down to this point. But I think I'm going to go with option number three. And that is a combination of option one and two. Instead of cutting all this down six or seven inches, I'll take just a couple inches off of this and use that material to make fill over there around the turn. So I'm gonna hop on the skid loader, we'll get this roughed in, and then we will uh, check it once again with the laser.
Take a little break. We're talking to a turkey. Can you hear him gobble? He's coming in. So took a little break there. We were calling a turkey and he was back there. Yeah, he, now he's coming from over there. He may have seen us so he got right up to in there. Yeah. But I just call him with my mouth and he'll answer. <laughs> he's coming in hot. You got, there's oh like five gosh. squirrels in a fight up there. You got turkeys. Do you see them things fighting? That's, that's domestic, yeah. It's a domestic disturbance up there yeah, in the woods. It's crazy. Here's this girl. Took a beat up. Oh. Get back here. Get your phone ready. The turkey's coming in. So I think the turkey uh, spotted us. I think he's getting further away. He, he was coming in hot and he came over top of this hill here oh. and he was right up in there about 50 yards. Yep. But we're standing here in the road. I think he spotted us. But these yeah. squirrels, oh, there's, there's like five of them. Five of them fighting, falling out of trees, chasing one another. There's one still over here. Four of them crossed and they're down in there. I don't know what their problem is. Nice day though, isn't it? It's a beautiful day. It's, it's muggy. Sweating. I'm getting this uh, road shaped up. I'm getting this brought up. I'm going to hop back on the skid loader now. A little bit more filling here, and then we'll check everything with the laser. How's that sound?
All right. I think we got everything where we need it at. We'll see here. The laser does not lie. I took uh, probably four or five inches out of here, added a couple inches over there, and I have a nice turn here in the road. But we'll see where we're at. So like I said, put the culvert right in here. Now this will get dug down some for the culvert, but I need to make sure the ditch has fall this way, both ways. Where were we before, like 411? 411 and a half. So I'm about five, five and a quarter. Five, five and a quarter, we'll call it. About five, two and a quarter. That's perfect. So I've got like three inches of fall from here down to there. I've got fall coming that direction. I got it all coming down this way. Now right up here on top, there's like a break point where it goes the other direction, which leads us to the next phase here. Down at the bottom of this hill, there's a dip and I need to put about a foot, foot and a half of fill in there and there'll be another culvert that crosses there. I'm going to get all that fill from just taking a few inches off of this hump right here. And standing the whole way back here, you won't be able to see it with this little camera, but I can go another hundred feet behind me and see the whole way to the clearing if I take just a couple inches off of here. So let's get started on that. This road is coming out beautifully. Really, really nice. I put about maybe a foot and a half of fill down here in this dip. We have a nice consistent grade going up the hill. Then it levels off for a little bit, drops down slightly to the turn. Just enough for water to flow. But uh, yeah, it's solid. I mean, it's solid road. Really good. If you've been watching our channel for a while, you know that I don't care what anybody else does, but I will tell you what I did on this road and the reason it's turning out so good. You have to separate your soil. You know, you don't want topsoil in a fill area. You don't want it on the road. Uh, topsoil has organic material in it. It doesn't compact. When it gets wet, it turns into a big mess. So you want to separate your soil, which is what I did. After I had the trees cleared in here, I stripped the topsoil off of this, and then I'm using good material to make my fill with, and I'm putting it in in thin layers. And I don't have a roller, but it doesn't even seem to matter. This is really solid. 
I'm really pleased with this. And the benefit to that, there's several benefits. Number one, you're not going to have to do a lot of maintenance. You know, if you bring a trailer back here, uh, you're not going to have ruts. It's not going to be torn up. And number two, the big benefit is it's not going to take much stone on this road at all. You know, if you're using, you know, like a mix of topsoil and shale, you'd use two to three times the amount of stone that I'm going to use on this road. I think with this one, I'm not going to put any geotextile down. Uh, I don't see the need for it here at all because my sub base is so solid. But I'll probably just put a layer of like 2B limestone on this, maybe an inch and a half of that. And that'll kind of pack down in this dirt just a little bit. And then 2A limestone on top of it. I love using the geotextile where needed, and it's not needed here. And the downside to the geotextile is you got to put at least five inches of stone on it, I'm saying, if you're going to use it. Otherwise, whenever you do a little bit of maintenance, a little grading, you're pulling up that geotextile and it's making a big mess. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to need it here at all. This thing is solid. You may have noticed when I was digging to get this fill for down here, I was kind of hogging for a little bit, you know, taking like three, four inches at a time and I'd leave a little step there and I'd go back up, take some more. But once I was getting towards the end, I was just taking fine little passes and just taking a little bit off each time. And that was doing two things. It was cutting grade as I go, any little low spots, it was filling that in and it was compacting it as I went. But I'm really pleased with it, if you can't already tell. What I'm gonna do next, probably tomorrow morning, I'm gonna come out here and clean these sides up with the excavator, and I will get some topsoil and debris on the road, but I'll be able to easily push that right off, and then I will put the land plane on the tractor, shine it up with that real good, and I'll be ready to go for stone once we get the gate in, uh, which will probably be later this week or first the next week, and we can open that up and I can get stone back here. And I will not have them tailgate the stone on. Everybody always says I should tailgate stone. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, it'll be places where I don't want it. It'll be spilling off to the sides. Uh, I probably will bring a truck all the way back here, dump back here, one at the other end so I don't have to bucket as far. I have the clearance here as far as tailgating for the dump bed, but uh, you know, most of those guys are pretty good at it. It's just not the way, I like putting a stone where I want it. You know what I mean? I like doing that. But anyway, I think that's it for today's video. Uh, don't forget, I'll put a link to that Bosch rotating laser in the description. I appreciate y'all being here and I will catch you on the next one.